if you enjoy recognizable movies that you have seen all over the world, then you're about to hear a movie that you might never saw in your theater. Whenever the Oscars announce the nominations, I usually plan to look at all of its contenders, including some of the independent or anime films, some of which I already have on DVD or Blu-ray. This is an independent movie based on a 2002 French novel by Gilles Paris called My Life as a Zucchini. The movie was directed by Claude Barras, who actually made a name of himself for creating some stop motion and 2D shorts, including one that's actually a pilot for the movie. The film got a screening at the 2016 Cannes Film Festival and received a nomination, but it had won many awards at the NSC International Anime Film Festival, the Satellite Awards, and the European Film Awards. It was even nominated to some of the Big League Awards like the Annie's Golden Globes and the Oscars for Best Anime Feature, all of which lost to one of Disney's most influential film of all time, Zootopia. Welcome to another episode of The Wonder Reviews. Grab your kite and let's see how long it can fly into the air. This is my life as a zucchini. <laughs> it's the story about a boy nicknamed Zucchini who accidentally killed his drunken mother with no one to take care of him and his dad ran off with another woman. A kind officer, voiced by Nick Offerman, takes him to a foster home where he can learn and make friends with the other orphans. It may be your typical movie starring some little kids, but there's definitely a reason why this is considered a PG-13 movie. This is a slice of life story where we look into the perspective of Zucchini and the other kids and how they are trying to deal with losing their family, but also create a new one. And in order to overcome that issue, it focuses on the characters' relationships with one another, whether it be Zucchini dealing with a bully named Simon, meeting a new girl, or their teachers falling in love and having a baby. The point is with those side plots, they're meant to talk about the theme of love and family, which the latter best describes most of the characters. You might notice that this movie shares some unique parallels to My Neighbor Totoro, which is about these kids living in a new home while also dealing with some family issues. Where Totoro focuses on the light side of childhood by creating joy and imagination, Zucchini focuses on the light and dark side of childhood by finding a new joy. Because they bond with each other so much, it helps the characters be three-dimensional and sometimes relatable. Zucchini, for instance, is trying to find love and trust after losing his family, but once he enters the foster home, he learns that he's not alone of losing someone. As it turns out, the other kids lost their parents for either dying or having trouble with the law. It allows to see layers of the other characters like Alice, Beatrice, Ogman, and Juju, but his strong connection comes from Camille, the new girl who he ends up having a crush on and eventually finally gained over his drug mother. There is also Simon, who at first is just the bully who believes he's above the other kids and always picks fun of Zucchini, but like him, he no longer has connections with his family and he actually knows about the character's background and later warns up to him. Together, they will help Camille get away from his rotten aunt, Ida, the only relative in her family that doesn't like her niece but only wants her in custody so she can have the family's fortune. Finally, there's Raymond, the officer that sends Zucchini to the foster home while also looking after him to make sure he's accustomed to his new home. He does show some fatherhood and the development that he used to have a family before one of which moved far away from him and unable to speak with them. Him, along with the other teachers, helped flesh out the movie to make it more of a slice of life and even coming of age story. I also give the movie credit by giving Zucchini a double-edged relationship with his old parents. It's true they weren't the best parents, they weren't even good parents to him from the very beginning, from cheating on someone, from drinking too much beer, to even emotionally and physically hurt him over small mistakes even if he wants to fix them. But still, he still loves his mom because she gave him the nickname Zucchini instead of going by his real name. But still, he's still relieved that he moved to the foster home where he can make some new friends and he doesn't have to be like his parents as an alcoholic growing up. This is obviously a stop motion film. It may not be extravagant like Kubo or Coraline, but it's not surreal like Will Vinton's work. But it doesn't have to be. It just needs to be simple like this movie. The designs and movements of the characters capture the feel of an actual person, including some of the kid characters. You can tell them apart easily thanks to their backstories and personality, which help makes them recognizable. The only times I remember that wasn't considered stop motion or made of clay are some of the art paintings like the weather meter or zucchini's letter, but still, they fit into the world perfectly. 
I'll even say the backgrounds are beautiful to look at. The foster home has a feel of a daycare, there's some nice winter colors at the ski resort, and the carnival captures the amusement. You could say if you'd simply adapt the story into live action, it would basically be the same, but I would have to disagree with you on that because the animation does play a role in the movie because it's meant to look into the perspective of Zucchini. This whole movie was like eating through a giant lemon drop. It was bitter on the outside because of the beginning, but it was sweet on the inside with its middle and end, and it was actually really pleasing to go through. My Life as Zucchini is a simplistically sweet stop motion movie with a charming story about family, memorable characters, and some great stop motion. I definitely recommend you go check this out. This independent movie gets an A and the Diploma of Destiny. I'm Mad Hair Patrick, now if you'll excuse me, let's bring joy and kindness to others, shall we? Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe me for a new review and other project every week. I'll see you soon.